Welcome back to the Dare to Dream podcast. My name is Gregory Russell Benedict, and this podcast is all about inspiring you to embark on the adventure of your life. Today, I want to talk about meaning. Meaning is a core component in living a story worth telling, because if we feel like our work doesn't matter, if we feel like our lives don't matter, we won't have the energy, the excitement, the audacity to get out there and do big things to achieve our biggest dreams and to make a meaningful impact on the world. So for me, meaning is one of the core pillars that I evaluate life through, and it's such an important piece to get right. I can speak to this from personal experience because for many years of my life, I felt like my life had no meaning. When I was working in finance, sitting behind a computer screen, typing away for 11 hours a day, I felt like my life was so empty and meaningless and that all the time I spent pouring into the financial modeling didn't really matter because it helped inform decisions, but decisions weren't actually based on what I was analyzing. And so at the end of the day, even when it was used, I felt like I was making money for people who didn't need to make any more money. Everyone invested in our fund was already a multimillionaire. And I just felt like I could do so much more with my life, with my potential, with my talents. And so that's why this concept, this idea is so important to me. I think we are in a meaning crisis. Everyone I talk to, my age, plus or minus, probably just plus 10, 15, 20 years, is looking for more meaning. They want to live an adventurous life. They want to have impact. Yes, they want to do cool stuff, but they really want to feel like at the end of the day, what they're doing matters and that it is contributing to a cause they believe in. So where I want to start with today's conversation is with a retired police officer named Yukio Shige. Now, a little bit about retirement before we jump in. In America, retirement is often equated with a permanent relaxation. You play golf in the morning, you read in the afternoon, you take some accidental naps at some point throughout the day, and a riveting crossword, a game of bridge, that is what we equate retirement with, at least here in the US. You think of old people moving to Florida to die, and retirement is just sailing off into the sunset, not doing anything, and slowly watching all of your bodily functions decline. Sounds great, right? <laughs> There's this retired police officer, 79-year-old Yukio Shuge, who spends his retirement doing something completely different. This is one of the most inspiring stories I've heard in a while. And it takes place at Japan's Tojinbo Cliffs. I absolutely pronounced that wrong. Probably going to get canceled for that racist accent. But he spends his time walking around these cliffs, not because he loves sightseeing or because he loves the cliffs themselves, but because he's looking for tourists who are getting ready to jump. He's looking for people who are contemplating suicide. He stands there armed with his binoculars. And over the years, he's developed his ability to know when it looks like someone is struggling. And what does he do? He doesn't call the police. He doesn't call his old colleagues. He walks up to this person. He sits down with them. He listens to them. He talks to them. He serves them a cup of green tea. How Japanese is that? And he even gives these people a place to stay if they need it. So he uses his empathy, his compassion, his listening skills to literally save people's lives. And he saves about 25 people per year. Now get this, Yukio has been doing this for 19 years and he's saved approximately 789 people. Think about it. 789 people are still alive, living better lives because of this single man. Now, I'm sure he derived a lot of meaning during his time as a police officer. I'm sure it was very fulfilling. But it was actually during retirement that he found his true passion, his true calling. And I'm sure that if we were to ask him today, which work was more meaningful, which work influenced your life more, it would probably be him helping save lives at the cliffs instead of all of his time in police work. Now let's talk about the meaning crisis in terms of work. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, a total of 47 million Americans quit their jobs in 2021. If you don't live under a rock, you're no stranger to what's called the great resignation, 
which is all of these people, many of them millennials like myself, getting up and quitting their job. And now why are people doing this? Is it because my generation is entitled, because we're lazy, because we don't want to work? No. The reason we're doing this is because we feel like the work we're doing is lacking meaning. And we want to do something that inspires us, that makes us feel like we're contributing to a greater cause and that our life matters. Whenever I'm talking to people of the baby boomer generation or even the silent generation before them, it's hard for us to see eye to eye on this because of a couple of things. Now, I get it. If I had fought in World War II and come home to America and I had the opportunity to sit in a nice cozy office and not get shot at, not have mortar rounds flung at my head, I would love that. But I grew up in a different generation with the privilege that my generation has been given comes a desire for more self-actualization, comes this hunger, this drive to live a more meaningful life and have a bigger impact. I think social media also plays into this because we see people having a platform and having an outsized impact. And when we see other people do that, we say, why not me? Why can't I do that too? If Kim Kardashian is able to influence all of these people in whatever way can Kim Kardashian influences people. Why not us? So I think that plays a key component in this too. But I keep coming back to this thought of if we feel like what we're doing for most of our lives doesn't matter, we're never going to be happy. I think we need meaning. I think we need impact. And I think we need adventure. These are three key components to living a meaningful life. And how I call that is living a story worth telling. Let's bring in a couple other interesting examples. I watched a TED Talk recently by Dan Ariely, who I'm not sure his exact title. He has to be some sort of behavioral scientist, psychologist, researcher kind of guy, because he was talking about studies that he has conducted. It turns out that when we know our work is meaningless, we don't want to do it. Duh. But let me give you an example. There was a study he conducted where people were asked to build Legos and they were paid a certain amount to do so. When they completed the first Lego, they were asked if they wanted to complete a second Lego and they would be paid a slightly lower amount. So in this first group, people continued building Legos for less and less and less. And each Lego they made was stacked on the table so they could see a sense of progress. At least they were building these things. There was a sense of achievement. And the other group, People were offered to build Legos for the same price. And when they finished that, they were offered to build another Lego. Yet while they were building that second Lego, the researcher, the person leading it, would disassemble the first one they built and put it into a little pile. And when they finished the second Lego, when they were asked if they wanted to build another, the researcher would hand them the pieces of the first Lego, which they had already completed. And then it was pulled apart before their eyes. I'm guessing you can guess which group built more Legos and which was more motivated to continue. It was the first group which could see the incremental addition of each Lego and the progress they were making. When you're doing work and it's disassembled in front of you, it's not very motivating to continue. The same point was proven using different mediums where participants were asked to circle groups of repeating letters on a page in this first group the page was turned in to someone who would inspect it, give a little nod of affirmation, and then put it in a pile. The second group was doing the exact same task, but instead of someone looking at your work, giving you a nod of approval and putting it in a pile, they would put it straight into a paper shredder without even looking. And again, this shows how important it is, even if you know your work is going to be disassembled eventually, or your work on this little test of circling letters is going to end up in the paper shredder eventually. If it goes there right away without any acknowledgement, without any pat on the back, you feel terrible. You feel like what you're doing doesn't matter. Why would you do it anymore? And this can be applied to everyday life. Again, when I worked in finance, when I worked in financial services consulting, I felt like the things I was doing did not matter. And when I felt like the things I was doing did not matter, it made Greg sad. It made me very sad. And I think a key component that people are missing in today's day and age is that we are missing the meaning piece. 
We are working on things that don't align with our interests. They don't align with our intrinsic curiosities. And at the end of the day, when we do the work, even if we do a good job, it's not acknowledged or rewarded. Now, I'll tell one more story from the TED Talk that really drives this point home and one that I can relate to on a deep level. Dan tells this story of a student of his who came back and had been working at an investment banking firm. Now, this student told the story of staying up night after night after night, working long hours to create this investment pitch deck that was part of an upcoming merger that was happening. He was bending over backwards, burning the candle at both ends to get this done, and he actually enjoyed the work. It was very challenging, but he was deriving a sense of accomplishment, of fulfillment from doing all of this. And on the final day, he completes the deck, he sends it to his manager, and his manager responds with a single sentence email that says, nice work, but the merger has been canceled. So all of this work, all of this effort he had been putting into this presentation suddenly felt like it did not matter. It went out the window. Now, if you really think about this, this is interesting because most of the time, those investment presentation decks are looked at by a couple people over a week, maybe two weeks, and then they disappear. They are helpful in the moment, but long-term, they don't really matter. Contrast this with doing all the work, turning something in and having it not even matter in the moment. That is the feeling that we're all trying to avoid. That is the feeling that sucks the most is when you do all this work on something and poof, it's gone. It evaporates. It gets deleted from your computer. You turn it in. No one even looks at it. That is the most frustrating thing ever. And so going back to this meaning crisis, one of the fastest ways to improve your life is to add more meaning to it. Find things that you care about, that you think matter, and start working on them. I'm not saying you need to quit your job tomorrow and go work for a nonprofit. I've done that. What I'm saying is find the little things in your life that matter. Stack as many of those as you can together, and soon you're going to start feeling like your life has more meaning, more purpose, more fulfillment. And actually, meaning and fulfillment are two words that get thrown around a lot, and I was thinking about them before recording this. I think meaning is what derives fulfillment or said differently, fulfillment is derived from meaning. You feel fulfilled when you are doing work that matters. You feel like your cup is full when you have made an impact in the world that matters, that is lasting, that is going to make someone else's life better. And fulfillment is derived from the process of pursuing meaningful things. That's all I have to say about meaning today. Thanks so much for tuning in with me today. And as always, I love you guys.